We are having a party today on the Woe Show with some of the web's leading fashionistas. We have Sylvia Van de Loek from Singapore joining us early Hello. morning. Thank you. It's 7 a.m. in Singapore. Yeah. We have welcome. We have Shelly. Oh, I forgot to say uh, she writes. Um, Fabulous app. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm mixing up all these names. Sylvia's blog is um, 40 plus style. This is Shelly Zurich from Still Blonde after all these years coming from Michigan. All these fashion centers. We have Oceana Lott who writes the blog Oceana's Canvas coming from California. We have Deborah Bolin coming from Toronto. Fabulous after 40. And my partner, Lynn Forbes, coming from Woo! California. Whoa. Whoa. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. So do I still have my party hat on? You of do. Course. OK. You look so, stunning. But I don't know if you should wear that at your age. I'm not quite sure. Well, that is the deal here. Because I know for me, <laughs> you know, the question I ask myself the most, and this is perfect, is, Am I too old to wear this? But you know, I really don't know. You are all the experts. I really don't know um, what the big issues are for other women. You have so much input, I'm sure, from your community. So I'd be really curious to know um, what are the things women, I mean, we all want to look good, but what are the issues that you find women are most hungry for in terms of fashion once they get up there into their 40s, 50s, 60s? So, uh, anybody can, I'll start with Sylvia. Okay. Um, what I found is that a lot of women are struggling with their uh, changing bodies. So they don't know how to cope with that. And they also don't like to show all, everything about their body. So the challenge um, is always to show those parts of your body that are most flattering or to dress in such a way that your best assets, so to speak, are, you know, highlighted, whereas you downplay all the things that you wouldn't like the world to see. So that is where a lot of my attention focuses on, and that's what a lot of people like to know about. Okay, so Shelley? Well, I think that um, being from the Midwest, I think uh, a lot of my audience is a little more conservative, uh, maybe not always um, wearing, you know, thinking about the latest fashion, but just trying to figure out how to operate within their world. And, you know, we've, we've grown up, a lot of us, in a generation where certain fashions like pantyhose, tights, were, were what we wore. And then there was a period where nobody wore that. And now it's like, well, gee, I, I really would like to wear pantyhose because I could look better. And I really would like to have a bra that makes my girls stay in a certain spot. And I, how, what do I do with this hair? You know, it's changing, it's graying, it's straightening out, it's getting curly, it's getting wiry. And so those are the things I really find that my readers struggle with is, is this, you know, this new person that still has the 20 year old inside and is attracted to the high shoes and the shorter skirts but yet well, I don't know should I have that on yeah, yes well I think yes I, th I mean that's a whole other issue but um, okay we'll let everybody else hop in here uh, Deborah Oh, there are so many issues. I think uh, definitely the body issue. I mean, everything's changing. You know, we're getting flabbier, we're getting a little heavier, and how do you dress? But another common problem that we find at Fabulous After 40 is that women's lifestyles are changing. You know, maybe they were in the corporate world, and all of a sudden they're opening their own business out of their home, and you have to dress totally differently, or they're kind of semi-retiring, and they're traveling a lot, and they don't know what to wear. So it's how to dress chic but casually is a really big problem. Okay, and Oceana? I, you know, I find that in the circles of women that I um, interact with, the big issue among us is, and I think among a lot of baby boomer women, is how to look good, feel good, and do good. And so um, a lot of what I think uh, women of this age are looking at is how do I dress myself stylishly and do it in an ethical manner. 
And so um, a lot of what I focus on in uh, working with clients is how do you select garments that are not only age appropriate, but are also ethical, meaning they're not sweatshop. Um, they're not made in a sweatshop. Um, the fabrics are um, sustainable, and um, they feel good and look good. Okay, so we have a whole range of um, issues that, that we're all dealing with. So one of the big things, I mean, we've all seen these um, lists of women rules, you know, when you, this is what you should never wear, this, you know, in the magazines, they, they segregate it by age and decade, and you should wear this, you should not wear that, which, first of all, there's no way to keep track or anything. And I also think that this is a time of life that, kind of like in a way what you were saying earlier about the different body parts and you want to focus on what you've got you know so I kind of feel this is when women come into their own when you're less worried about what people think when you feel more your authentic self and it almost seems like an unbelievable confounding issue that at the time you feel like you want to be out there the fashion world or the culture is telling you, no, no, follow these rules, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that. So what is your feeling about, and anyone jump in here, what's your feeling about having a set of expectations or rules for women at any age? Well, I'll speak to that. I mean, I think, first of all, the philosophy of fashion, Fabulous F40 is, you know, fashion should be fun. No, it's not something heavy duty and serious. It should be fun. It should be an expression like, of your just true like self. The crown on your, just like the crown yeah, on your head. Yeah, just like oh, the yeah. crown on my head. You know, I'm happy. Yeah. If I like it, it's good for me. Uh, yeah. But it should be fun. It should be an expression of who you are. And I find that after 40, you know, 40s, 50s, and 60s, women really want to express who they are. That maybe in their 20s and 30s, you know, they had certain roles to fulfill. They had to be the mother or they had to be the, you know, they were going on dates and they had to look a certain way or whatever. And, and, in their 40s, the focus is on them, and they're exploring who they are, and they want to, you know, show their true self through their clothing. So I think it is really important. You know, I mean, sure, there's always certain guidelines, but it has to do more with your body and your personality. Mm -hmm. it, it, you really should be expressing who you are through dressing, because that's what's going to give you real joy in life, being your authentic self. Yes. And that's what you have at this age. I mean, you can't always wear everything, but you have your personality and your yes. style and your, you know, that all can come out in your clothes. So, um, absolutely. Be yourself. You I know, think that oh, one of the great things about being yourself is when you're, when you feel comfortable in your clothes and your personally, and your personality is shining through, then you actually look better. Um, and it doesn't matter what kind of physical attributes you have, if you're feeling comfortable and you're feeling confident, like Mike, I, in fact, I gotta say, Sylvia, you had a great post um, a few, I think it was a few months ago, where you're wearing this great um, sh kind of shortish gray jersey dress, and you look fabulous. It was a little short, you were concerned, but you looked good, you rocked it. And I think at this age, um, there are a lot of those old rules kind of can go out the window. I think if we're doing it with enough confidence, um, and you can pull it off. Yeah, and what you, you can also do is, what, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, I can never see myself on the big screen, which is weird. But um, what you can also do is, what I do these days a lot, for, for example, a lot of women feel that, you know, like myself, I usually don't wear uh, shirts or uh, dresses that are that short, but I then wear them over pants, you know, which some people think is a weird thing to do, but I mean, it's a great look for women. I love that because, look. I love it. Yeah, because it can really, uh, you know, hide all the things that you don't want to show, and it, it, gives, it gives a great silhouette. So that is also, you know, you can reuse your clothes that you might not feel completely comfortable in anymore and use them in different ways. If you yeah. can still fit into your pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just, that's interesting. I was just going to say that because so many times women at this time, they, they're, 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 whether you've gained weight or not, you're, things begin to shift and you could weigh the exact same amount you were, you, you, that you had, uh, that you weighed rather 10, 10 years ago, but things sort of move around a little bit, right? So people are not as comfortable with their bodies and so they start to hide and they start to, you know, hide flaws and they sort of start taking pieces of their wardrobe and putting them in the bottom of the closet and never wearing them again, which is kind of sad, you know? 
Also, I think the cl the clothes are so much more fun now. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I I okay. think that a lot of us came up in the years where everybody you had to wear a shirtwaist dress or the little outfits, the sweater sets, it, whether they look good on you or not. And now the clothes are so much fun and there's such a wide range, which A, makes it frustrating, but also opens up what you can do. And I'm sure all of us have are com uh, familiar with the blog Advanced Style, which is, um, you know, just unbelievable, which actually brings up the quote that I'm going to bring up that Shelly sent us, uh, I'm going to let Shelly talk to this right before we went on today. Um, she sent us a fantastic quote. Um, I don't know how to pronounce her name. How, you could tell me Prada. Uh, can uh, you see this, Prada? This, this, this uh, quote actually is from, um, I picked it up off Ellen Dolgan's blog today, uh, who blogs about menopause. Um, the other one is from Advanced Style, but this particular one um, is is from, uh, how do you say her first name? That's what I'm wondering. I don't know. I think Pro it's, Mo it's Muchia. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, it's Muchia. Muchia I didn't, I, didn't know she, I didn't know she had a first name. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if you could put it up there on the screen, maybe I could just read yeah, it. Yeah, it's up there now. Can you okay. see it? Yes. Um, women always try to tame themselves as they get older, but the ones that look the best are often a bit wilder. Thinking about age all the time is the biggest prison women can make for themselves. Yeah, and wow. I really think that second sentence, thinking about um, age all the time is the biggest prison that women can put themselves in is, is so true. Because how a lot of women our age introduce things to me is they talk about being marginalized, put to the side, and I really claim for myself that, you know, e even in fashion, I I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to claim my age, on my blog I claim it, and I just say, look, we're going to show women here over 45, we're beautiful, we have beautiful insides and outsides, and we're going to show the world that we can be beautiful. And, and we're not, you know, <laughs> and, and, and going to the, you know, the advanced style blog, I mean, there's women there that are in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they are stunning and an inspiration to me, and I read him every day just so I can remember I can still be beautiful 30 years from now. And that's Ari, Ari Cohn. He has a documentary coming out, actually. He does a series of photos. For those who are not familiar with AdvancedStyle.com, please go. And he does, he does a series of photos with women who are um, quite, much, quite a bit older. Um, and now he's got a documentary coming out, which I'm very excited to see. So he, he's which, doing amazing work. Which also really lifts the whole feeling of what women at this age have in them. I mean, he, he, he started by just finding women on the street in New York and taking their picture. And it's, it's amazing to see these women there. And that's the beauty of this age is to put, out your, put yourself out there. Well, so, Daryl, like you have hair down to your waist. And, you know. No you, kidding. <laughs> I mean, yeah. well, show everybody your hair. Beautiful Lift it up. Yeah. Lift it up. Well, so, I, I break all the fashion rules, you know, totally. Yeah. I have a lot of hair. You know, and, and nice. I think this is something that you, you know, definitely that's always first on the list, you know, cut your hair. Right. And, you know, I lost my, anyway, it's, it, it's not worth explaining, but I am not by far the only person with long hair anymore. And I think people, maybe at our age too, you want to throw those rules out the window. So I think that's part of what, what we do. And, um, you know, I, I, I think we could sit here all day and, and talk about this and so I'm really hoping that we'll do it again but I would like to hear each of you kind of give your best advice if you if you were speaking to women because everybody doesn't feel as confident to put themselves out there you know yet um, and so what would be the one best piece of advice you would give to women as they're getting a little bit older to get more comfortable about what they're wearing? Because women agonize over this, obviously. So um, how about Deborah? Well, my big thing is color. I think a lot of women fall into a dumpy rut, you know, with style. They, they are not feeling good about themselves. They're not feeling confident. And maybe they don't even know it, but they start hiding behind black dark colors and especially black I call it abundant black disorder it's you know true. they fall into this 
And I would say, you know what, and I've told a lot of women this on the blog, and it really helps, start introducing color into your wardrobe. And a lot of women, oh, I can't wear a cloud color, you know, I just black, black, black. No, start introducing some color, especially up by your face. And it's going to change. Color affects your mood. It affects other people's moods toward you. And you're going to start feeling more alive. And when you feel more alive, you feel more youthful, you feel more passionate. And when you look good, you feel good. Life is so much more fun. So start wearing some color. That's what I'd suggest. You, you know, I have to just tell you, I think that is such a wonderful and important thing because actually that, that happened to me. I mean, I actually remember once going to a wedding a few years ago and a bunch of the women at the wedding, we were all, you know, at our bar mitzvah, we're all standing to the side talking. <laughs> and one of the kids came over and said, you know, were we told to wear black? As, you know, <laughs> you know, it was yeah. like they thought that there was some rule that all the women had been told to wear black because everybody was in black. And I have really um, made an effort to do this, and it totally lifts your mood. So yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, it's just not, and it's not even flattering. You know, after a certain age, black, it, you know, our skin gets paler. We. You know those lines and wrinkles in black. It's it's really strong. You know, harsh. It really, it's harsh. harsh. Yeah, it's harsh. So everybody put color in your life. So yeah. o Oceana, what, what what would be your piece of advice? Um, I would say look for the things that um, feel good on your body. I mean, you can go through your wardrobe and you can see the things that you wear over and over again because they feel good. And they, when you put them on, they make you feel like a star. I would concentrate on those few items in your wardrobe where every time you wear them, you get compliments, you feel like a rock star in them, and build your wardrobe around those pieces. Maybe you get two more of those tops or a few more pair of those pants. And that's, that's my suggestion. Okay, great. Um, okay, Sylvia, out um, there in Singapore, where you probably yeah. just want to wear something that's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, you know, you hardly wear anything, you know. But uh, yeah, no, I would say um, concentrate on a nice silhouette. Um, I like, uh, you know, for example, a lot of women split themselves in, in half sometimes, or you know, you have like I, I call it, it's a called a golden ratio of dress of dressing, but it works in every part of life, also in design, but it works for dressing too, which is that you try to create a silhouette which has one third, two third, uh, which means that you you balance your body in such a way that it just automatically looks better. For example, you have to be really careful with the current Capri trend because if you wear Capris, which are a bit shorter, and your legs are already short, and you wear a bit of a longish top over that, you really split your body in half, which is never flattering. And I think if you concentrate on a, on a nice silhouette, and yeah, look at yourself from all angles in the mirror, and and folk, and and you know maybe you have that in the back of your mind because it doesn't always work that golden ratio rule. But I mean, if you create a nice silhouette, you usually feel good about it, and and you look good. Well, I think it's encouraging just to hear you say there are ways to wear capris because capris are one of those things that you hear never wear crop pants after a certain age. And so um, I think this is, these are all, you know, I think definitely people should go on a lot of these blogs and get information on some of these ways that you can adapt these styles that we all still want to wear and make it, make it work for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's one of my most popular pages. I mean, people are looking for that all the time. And yeah, that's what I'm hoping to provide, you know, a bit of guidance because a lot of people do appreciate that. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, Shelly? Well, definitely, if anyone knows me, it's all about the shoes. And I find as uh, a lot of women age, they tend to go to a more dowdy, safe shoe. And that's fine if you need to uh, correct uh, health problems. But to me, the, you really need to, <laughs> you know, wear the, for me, I like to wear the highest shoe possible for the outfit. Um, it might not be a four-inch heel, but, you know, something cute, uh, something that starts with the shoe. I often buy my shoes first and then put the outfits with it. I'm, I'm, I'm a total shoe person, but also I believe a lot more people should be on my book blog, one thing I've noticed is as I encourage and push women to go out and, and you know, they'll ask me, well, what should I wear with this? I'll suggest a shoe, they'll go get that, and they'll be astounded how much better they look because a shoe tends to 
maybe lift the butt a little bit. It, it might, you know, change your stature a little bit. And it, it just adds this uh, air that um, sometimes uh, a flat or an ugly flat um, just just doesn't add to the outfit. And, and that, so I really think if we watch our shoes, it, it enhances our whole outfit and causes us to choose nice silhouettes like uh, Sylvia was talking about. It can also really improve the line of your leg. Yeah, for oh, sure. That, yeah, I just read, though, I just, just read about Sarah Jessica Parker who said that all those years, I don't know if anybody else read this, that all those years of wearing the high, high heels on the set all day, and she, she said her feet are a disaster. So maybe the answer, Shelly, is when you have something where you need to wear, you know, I mean, I do that, but I mean, to stand all day like I used to in heels, I mean, do you really do, you really do that? Are you well, in, in head I'm, heels all day? I'm a blogger, so obviously there's a lot of downtime. But I believe, <laughs> you know, when I'm when I'm out there to look good, I, I'm not a, in a four or five inch heels. No, I'm definitely not. But I, you know, I, I definitely try to choose a higher heel. I am a person that has the shorter legs and the longer body, and it definitely evens things out. And it's not something uh, uh, we should miss. There's wedges, there's espadrilles, there's lots of there's clogs, there's things that can add height. And it's it's just more attractive in my opinion. And, and there are a lot of really really nice flat shoes and mid heel shoes. Eh? True. I focus yeah. I, because I focus on that on the bloggers. Those really really high ones are just you know too high for me and for a lot of people. So but I really if you if you get a really hip flat shoe or you know like you can go wild with shoes. There's no oh, rules. No what's you, you have Darwin yeah. shoes. I love all your shoes. Like I want that, and I want that, and I want that. <laughs> Can I ask a question? I mean, I know Deborah. We we talked about this before. I'm really interested in, but like, where are the designers uh, designing for women specifically in this demographic? Who should we be paying attention oh, to? Eileen Fisher. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's uh, really frustrating. There, there is no one person. I mean, this is the thing. You're going from you know, the, the young to the old stores and everything in between. And that's the whole frustrating thing. That's why a lot of women give up after 40 because, as I said, their bodies have changed, but also there's no clothing out there for them. I mean, we're at the stage of life where we, I mean, I want something comfortable. I won't buy anything that's not comfortable. I want something with some shape because my body's changing and I want to give it some form. I want something that's hip and cool but not so trendy I'm going to look like a desperate teenager. <laughs> it's really, it's it's really really hard. I mean, I you know, and it, it's a lot of it's depending on your body type as well. You know, um, you know what designers you like. So I wouldn't say there's one particular designer for women forty, fifty, and beyond. It's, it's it's like going in the jungle and hunting. You gotta go through a lot of stuff until you find what works for you. I also think though that you know I know for me when I was younger and I was working a lot and I was wearing suits and very dignified and now I feel clothes are more fun and so I find myself my biggest issue and I don't know if any of you want to speak to this is that I'm constantly in my head whether I'm getting dressed or buying something am I too old to wear this because I am really attracted to you know, I think my inner hippie is still here and all these things that are out now and it's really an issue. And I mean, I have friends where the kids, you know, this hasn't happened to me, but where the kids are sort of, you know, mom, you, re you really can't wear that, you know, and yet, like my daughter is always saying, oh, mom, wear that, that looks cool. So, you know, but but it's really kind of a weighing that what's appropriate and, and yeah. I don't want to be dowdy either. And you look at these women that are so out there, you know, it's, I guess it's a process of elimination and not caring what anybody thinks but you. I think it's about confidence. See, if you yeah. wear that with confidence, you can you can wear anything. I mean, that that's what the ladies of advanced style have proved. I mean, they go there in the most sometimes most outlandish outfit, and they look great because they wear they it do. with such confidence. So if you can do that, I think you can wear almost anything. But I think what's true about advanced style is that the reason we cut those women so much slack or we think they look good is because they really are so so much older. But I think that when you're in that middle those middle years, we're very hard on each other. We judge each other as we walk by. We think, what was she I'll say, what was she thinking wearing that? Or, you know, we wouldn't do that to someone who is 80 because it's kind of cute. It's kind of Betty Whitish and we kind of give mm. that person some leeway. But I think that when you're a little younger, well, quite a bit younger, 30, 40 years younger, we don't give that same leeway to each other. So 
maybe it's a, a matter of judgment too. It's really true, and there are a lot of years for us in between those, um, you know, where we are here and how many years, you know, um, we're going to be wanting to look good and dress. So, I would um, argue though that that there really are that there really are people who the majority of people would think they do look ridiculous, and and they might even be confident in what they're wearing, um, and so that's why so many times I think they stop and ask. Do I look okay? Am I too old for this? Is it? Is it? There is a point where some things just are not appropriate for certain ages. Um, once again, back to the advanced style. Something I've asked Ari before is, why do all the women have silly hats on? You know, I mean, and and some of them are super <laughs> uh, super stylish, but some like of them are, are just kind of, you know. Why I don't know, a little ridiculous. Yeah. And, and you know, and so I'm like, you know, why do they have to wear silly hats? And, uh, you know, so I think sometimes you need to, to, to be honest. Uh, it, that's why uh, What Not to Wear lasted for 10 years on network TV is because there's a, a lot of people out there who need fashion advice. I think one of the things about the women in advanced style is, I mean, uh, beyond the silly hats that was attracted to me or landed with me was that they had distilled down after all these years they had distilled down a very personal style and it was recognizable and it was tangible and undeniable and I think that's one of the things that um, women uh, baby boomer women could be focusing on at this point is what is it what's what is it about my personal style that I want to convey. I mean, a lot. Of, I think a lot of people go out of the house and they don't really realize that their clothing is saying quite a lot about them, um, whether they know it or not. And I think if more women spent time thinking about what is the communication, what is the message I want to deliver when I walk out the door, whether I'm going to work or the grocery store, I think that that kind of question would have. Uh, more of us think about what it is we're putting on our body. Hmm. I think yeah. that's a good point, but I think most women over 40, they've, they're have they just lost where to even begin. So what I always say is, you know, there are no role models out there, really. I mean, it's very hard to find women who you want to emulate. So I, I just say go to the mall or go downtown or go wherever you, you think there are some stylish women and start sitting there and looking at them and taking mental notes about what they're wearing and thinking, gee, I like that, I don't like that. And the ones that you like, kind of dissect them, you know, kind of think, okay, so what are they doing right? Okay, they've got the boots and they've got the little top, you know. And then the more you watch these women, the more you analyze them, the more you're going to figure out what you like and then you're going to buy those things and then when you look in the mirror, it's going to, you're going to know, does that look age appropriate? I mean, can, right? can, I think Oh, Deborah, that is so true. Yeah. I often tell people, who are lost in the weeds, as you say. <laughs> I say, why, as a starting point, why don't you look around and think about who it is, whose style do you like? Yes. So pick a celebrity, even. You know, pick a, I call them style icons. Choose your style icon. Who would you like to look like? Whose style you think would work well on you? For me, I know it's. Um, Oh, uh, Vanessa. Oh, of course, now I'm going blank. You know, Vanessa the, Williams? Vanessa Williams, yeah. that's right. I mean, I think to myself sometimes, would Vanessa wear this? You know? Right. So, <laughs> but it's hard because Very there good. aren't a lot of over 40 fashion icons so out there. And the ones that are, they usually dress for the red carpet. And that's well, the, not the way women, you know, over 40 dress every day. They're looking for everyday kind of role models, and they're hard to find. That's why blogs are so good, because there's yeah. now so many women over 40 bloggers. I mean, and if you don't know where to find them, I've got a whole list of them. There's more than 200 of them. So, I mean, there's bound to be somebody that has the same grad body or has the same style as you. And then, you know, you can take inspiration from that as well. I agree. And I also think uh, another thing is Pinterest. I spend a lot of time on there, yeah. and my two mm -hmm. most popular boards for, for my blog are Hairstyles for Women Over 45, especially that one, and fashion for women over 45. And I only have women over 45 on there, and if I know their name or know their age, I always put that in there. 
And it's amazing how many people go there, click on it, repin it, because they're just desperate to figure out, oh, gee, what do I do with this? And, and how do I deal with these? And it's, it's just really a frustrating time. And, and Pinterest is super useful because it's visual. Boy, yeah. it'd, be a great, it'd be a great TV show. Pinterest is awesome. Well, I think that it, this is a perfect um, kind of way to end our broadcast today because I think the answers are on the Internet. Um, you know, don't you know anybody who's interested in fashion? All these women have wonderful blogs filled with information, filled with pictures and suggestions to help you. So all the links will be here, and we'd love. We really want to thank everybody for joining us: Deborah, Oceana, Shelley, and Sylvia. Check out their blogs for more information, and I can't wait to have you guys back and have another party with you so yeah thank you too. so much thanks, thank you thanks. so much for being with us Good talk everybody bye. take care okay, okay. Bye. bye bye bye, bye.